How do you look at the trade war? So we, three weeks ago, thought that actually President Trump wanted a deal at any cost. And now actually the mood music has completely flipped. Yes, look, I think it's, trade is the pinnacle of something much bigger. It's essentially what looks increasingly like a strategic confrontation between China and the U.S. And really the underlying uh, prize in a way, and the quote from the president uh, indicated that a second ago, is supremacy in the digital technology space. Uh, now trade is very important as a risk. It's the main risk in the short term to the global economy. We've seen some de-escalation in Europe with Canada and Mexico. Uh, on the Chinese front, of course, things are getting more heated up and it's getting more and more difficult to pull out of it. So I think it is a very serious risk, but underneath it, there's a bigger story. But so, it's, I mean, the trade work, could it escalate even if it stays as it is? What does it mean for world growth? You were for many years, of course, a central banker. Should they worry about, you know, deflationary environment or the consequences of what actually a, a global depression would be? I would say the baseline scenario is not bad, global growth. Um, we're still slowing a bit, growing but slowing. Although there are some recent signs that both in Europe and China there may be a bit of an upside surprise potential there. It's really a risk story. Uh, it's a risk story. So far we don't see much of it being manifest in the hard data. You see some softness in Asian trade. Uh, but basically the channel will be through sentiments and business investment. At the moment these are primarily risks. Uh, but very significant risks because it's not just, it's really the reordering of the global trading system that's at stake here. But so if you look at, uh, you know, a downturn or a slowdown, would it come from consumers spending less or would it come from chief executives not investing? I think that the latter would be the most likely direct impact, that you'd have a confidence shock that would then manifest itself in, in change patterns in terms of business spending, investments, <laughs> and that could then, you know, undermine an economy which is growing, but it's not great. As I said, we're growing at kind and a roughly potential, uh, so it wouldn't take very much to throw it off course, although at the moment, again, the baseline scenario is, is reasonably constructive. Should we worry more about the U.S. economy or the Chinese economy? Well, I think it's the global economy and, you know, the Chinese economy is, is getting very big. Uh, in the next five to ten years, the contribution of U.S. growth is going to go to about one-tenth. So China matters more and more every year. But here what really matters is the interaction between these two biggest economies in the world and what it would, what it would do to the, um, to the global economic system. So there are particular links actually between the Swiss National Bank and China. Is PBOC actually the, you know, the, a force that will do whatever they can to make sure that the economy doesn't drop off the cliff? Do they have the right people in place? What do we understand about how they operate? My experience has always been not just in the central bank, but generally that the Chinese have always Always had, um, you know, first-rate policymakers in place. Certainly, the ones I've interacted with, uh, and we have seen, of course, this pattern that they have a wide range of instruments, arguably perhaps wider range of instruments than, than many countries in the West would have, in order to to stabilize and respond to weakness, which is exactly what we've seen every step along the way. And indeed. One of the reasons I see some short-term upside potential in China is, in fact, once again, we've seen this easing effort to counteract some of, the, uh, some of these risks. Um, final question on China, and then I know we need to take a break. When you look at renminbi, if it touches seven, what does it mean? I mean, it, it, it's kind of seen as, you know, the ultimate test. But what actually happens if it touches seven? I think we should think of the currency much as in, in, in the traditional monetary context in other countries as part of what makes up the overall monetary conditions. And so I'm sure it's an important factor in how the authorities, the central bank, but also the fiscal authorities determine how much uh, stimulus to put in the system. But, but it's really no different uh, than in other countries where it is an important piece uh, in, the, in the makeup of Chinese uh, monetary conditions.